Hi, welcome back to the journey home. Love, Mesa. I'm Mesa, and this is my wife, Laura. We're just reading our letters that she's kept throughout the whole time that from when we first met. Just a little um, brief summary of what we've been doing this last week. We went over and got ourselves into a lease to open up a new tattoo shop. So right now we're pulling up the floor. We're going to be painting it up. You know, she's picked some colors out and some things that it's going to look pretty cool when it's finished. You know, the purpose of us opening that tattoo shop is for people like me that have just been recently released from prison that wants an opportunity to do something for themselves to get on their feet. You know, so for those that live out here in the valley in Utah, if you're a tattoo artist, you got some skills, and you're looking for a space to get into because... You know, you haven't been out here. You don't have the connections to be able to get into this other shop. Man, we want you to hit us up. Follow me on Facebook, Mesa Rith. And if you're serious about restarting your life, doing something for yourself, and committing to your craft, we'll be happy to have you as part of our family. But again, you know, if you're on some BS, you know, we ain't got time for that shit. So... Even if you are feeling like maybe you're not up to par, if you've been tattooing in prison, even if you're a young person with some art skills, like we are interested in helping you become legitimate, like giving you the tools and the information that you need to be tattooed professionally. So, um, yeah, you can hit us up on Facebook. Uh, we're showing all of our progress, building out the studio over there. And um, Mesa Rith, M-E-S-A-R-I-T. You can uh, message us there. That was the promo for our new tattoo shop. Evolution Tattoo Company. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Evolution Tattoo SLC. You know, come check it out. We're on uh, 300 West and 1500, 1531 South. Right here. I mean, uh, this, uh, these videos here are about... You know, the journey that me and my wife went through for the last, you know, two plus decades before I came home. We met in 2005, and she so happened to save all of her letters, you know, from the first letter to the very last. And she just want to showcase, like, all the things that we go through to build a relationship, keep the relationship, and eventually come home and be married. And... All the things in between, because it's not easy for someone like her to be out here waiting for somebody to beckon. You know, for me, I didn't have a choice. I'm there. I'm stuck. But her, she has her life to live, but she made the decision, you know, to be there for me and to wait for me, to love me and to care for me. And we just wanted to just maybe it could help someone that's in the same similar situation. You know, someone that has a, a loved one that's locked up in prison and that might not be coming home for a while, to hopefully encourage them and to give them some type of support that maybe there's, you know, that there is light at the end of the tunnel and that it is possible to be able to endure this time of separation. So, dear Mesa, hi, how are you? I hope you're good. I'm pretty good. I just got back from Kansas City where my mom and brother live. It was my niece's second birthday. Her name is Madison, and she is too cute. My brother is doing better. I think he quit his job laying carpet to move to Harvest, New Mexico, where my mom grew up, to learn how to work on the oil pump. His girlfriend is not too happy about it, but it should be really good for them. And if they decide they don't like living in such a small town, they can always move again. I drove out there with my sister and flew back. She went to see our biological father. She is trying to reconnect with him and his kids. They're all adults with kids of their own. She's been trying to get me to go with her, but I am not interested into it. But I'm not into it at all. She keeps saying how sorry she feels for him, that we were taken away from him. You know, we were the kids. He didn't make an effort in 22 years. Now I need to be the one to try to be a part of his family. 
I don't think so. It takes more than sperm to be someone's father. I sent him a letter two years ago after we saw him, which I didn't want to do at our grandfather's funeral, and I never got a reply. She can do whatever she can do whatever makes her happy. <coughs> I just wish she would just leave me out of it. I don't even like it when she refers to him as dad. To me, he is Bill. If he wants to call, if he wants to call him dad, he can say my dad. I'm sorry. I'm going off and I'm not sure why. So I'll change the subject. I'm glad you got your own spot, even if it's only temporary. How'd you get so lucky? I guess I've had a lot of preconceptions, preconceived notions about what prison must be like. But you have said a few things that are contrary to my assumptions. So I have a new question. You can tell me to cool it if this is irritating you. I just have no idea what prison is like, and I want to understand better. Actually, I'm not even sure why I want to ask you. I'm mostly surprised to let you make a Passover dinner. You just make a request for lamb. The bread is matzo also. I like matzo ball soup. My mom makes it with chicken. Have you ever tried the felty? The felta fish? If not, don't. <laughs> it doesn't sound good at all anyway. <laughs> the felta fish? <laughs> I've never tried it. It looks nasty. My sister and brother like it, but I've never eaten a tuna fish sandwich either. Do you just request special stuff? I don't really consider myself Jewish. My mom converted to Judaism when I was four. I went to Hebrew school twice a week and service on Friday nights. I had my bar mitzvah at 13 and my confirmation at 17 but I don't really know what it means to be Jewish. To me, it seems like the religion is only about tradition. My mom has always been very open to freedom of religion. I wish I had been better in school because I've always wanted to take courses on theology when I was 17. I started looking to, don't freak, it's not devil worship, Wicca. I guess I have a very pagan-based belief system. That's why I got you as a non-Jew, as a pen pal. I believe in something, but it's more earth-based. I do believe in reincarnation. Maybe it's just a hope that this isn't all there is. I definitely, definitely believe in karma. I don't really know. It's hard to explain what you believe when you don't subscribe to a specific doctrine where they tell you what you're supposed to believe. I'm very sarcastic most of the time. I don't usually mean to offend people. I just say what I want and usually don't apologize for the things that come out of my mouth. I really do love religious imagery. The more authentic, the better. But I think things that make fun of religion are pretty funny. Pope on a rope. Virgin nightlight. Velvet Jesus painting. That one. I want really bad. I think zealots in any faith can be bad for the religion. I also think the majority of people know the difference between right and wrong. That they don't need the church to tell them how to live a religious life. Speaking of, in one of your letters you said that the caliber of prison at Victorville was about as bad as it gets. Do you feel differently now that you're at Beaumont? So there's pool tables and a music room. I think this is very interesting. What other amenities do they offer? Do you have a locker? Do you get to collect things? I imagine there's a library. Let's see. What do you do with your books when you're done with them? When you're not on lockdown, what do you do? Anything you want? Do you have a job to do? Do you make money or some kind of credit system? You said there was a commissary. What kind of things do they offer? And if you don't like your cellmate, you can ask to move. I didn't realize they were so accommodating. And if you get all the equipment together, 
you finally find a, gimpy, a guinea pig, where would you tattoo them? And the guards. And the guards don't say anything about it? I know. I told you before. But I'll say it again. You can always tattoo your own legs until you get control of your equipment. We all had to tattoo ourselves before we could tattoo someone else. Maybe you can just run me through a typical day for you. If they open the doors at 6 a.m., what are you supposed to do all day? Do you have free range of the prison? Or do you have to stay in a certain area? What is the prison set up like? I mostly listen to hip hop. I love to dance. When I was between 12 and 14, In Living Color was on TV, and I wanted to be a fly girl. That was when I lived in Albuquerque. At our house, we had double sliding doors in the kitchen. I would watch the program and then go dance in the reflection of the window. I know, it's funny, smiley face. Sometimes my sister would come ask me how to do a certain move. After I moved to Denver, when I turned 16, my one friend and I would go to all age hip hop clubs. I think we got into more trouble than we did dance. She was a very beautiful girl, half Korean and French, and black girls didn't really like it too much when black guys talk with chicks that aren't also black. She was very exotic looking, so nobody could ever decide what nationality she was. Half black, Mexican, maybe Asian. We had a lot of fun. I don't go out dancing with much anymore, at least not to a hip hop club. I don't have many friends who would feel comfortable in that environment. It's still my music of choice. Right now, my favorite female artist is Sierra. My favorite rapper is Ludacris. I love his flow and the sound of his voice. It's unique and very distinctive. At the shop, at, at the shop I'm at now, we mostly listen to rock. I don't mind it if it's not too hard. I really like acid jazz, whatever the hell that is. <coughs> Porter's head. And I like some foreign music, mostly Latin. Don't worry about trying to come up with a design for me right away. I want to find an artist who is really good at black and gray. So I need to go check on some portfolios in different shops. Because I wouldn't want anyone I work with to do it. They aren't bad, just not good enough. Smiley face. Well, I should probably let you go for now before you're too overwhelmed with all my questions to reply. So you need a phone card to make calls or do the prison give you the 300 minutes? I'm not ready yet, just curious. I hope if you're still locked down that you continue to have your own cell. That way you can have privacy for your bird bath. Smiley face. Okay, take care of yourself. Hope to hear from you soon, Laura. <clears throat> I don't know, I'm just stuck in a cell right now. <laughs> you know, not too many stuff's interesting going on when you're just locked down all the time. Okay, here's his reply. Dear Laura, hi, how are you? I hope you're well. I got the books that you sent today, July 18th, 2006. Thank you. But I haven't received a letter from you. I'm sure you wrote me back already, but I think the mailroom is messing with me. The mailroom and I are beefing right now. I've been here over two months, and I haven't got all my personal property that was sent with me from Victorville. I got the tracking number of the boxes, the boxes that was sent, and it all says it got here back May 22nd, but these people here say they can't find it. I wouldn't make any big deal over it. I mean, these things get lost sometimes, but when I first got here, I had a confrontation with some of the people here, and I think I know they're fucking with me because of it. I think they're mad because after a month of not getting any answer about my property, I went to the warden. I think going over their heads only made things worse for me. But what choice do I have? I can't do shit but sit here and look dumb. Anyways, that's about two weeks ago, 
and that's when I noticed that I haven't gotten any personal mail. I called my brother and told him to send me a letter just to see if my hunch is right, and I haven't got it yet. That's two weeks ago. I hope I'm wrong and that maybe the mail room is a little slow or maybe you haven't had time to write back yet. Smiley face. But after getting the books today, I know you would have sent a letter too and I haven't gotten anything. The last thing I want is you thinking I'm not writing back or that I've lost interest. It's not the case at all. I've been on edge just sitting here waiting to hear from you. It was a long week last week. Every day at 5, they do mail, and I think I was starting to get on my Sally's nerves because I kept telling him that you should have wrote me <laughs> wrote by now, and I know you did, but the mailroom is messing with me. Come to think of it, I do think, I do kind of sound crazy. <laughs> Smiley face. If I'm getting crazy, then you're the one to blame, smiley face. I hope you don't hold it against me. I enjoy hearing from you. You're more than I've ever expected. You've given me something to look forward to every week. Thank you. Like I said before, it's been a long week, a couple of weeks, actually. Are you sitting down? I should warn you to brace yourself, because I'm about to get into a sob story, <laughs> smiley face. You have my permission to feel sorry for me and all that good stuff. I'm not ashamed to say that I'm not above pity. Pity is good sometimes. <laughs> the story goes like this. A couple of weeks ago, I think it was the 30th of June, I call home and my little brother told me that 10 of my homeboys that I've known forever got picked up by the feds and indicted for a RICO act. I don't know how, but the grand jury indicted them on a criminal, as a criminal enterprise. They're all facing 25 years each, and two of them is looking at death penalty. I told, I told you it was bad. Anyways, I called my lawyer, and she told me she can't talk to me on the jail phone because they are monitored. So I have a phone call set up with her through my counselor for the 25th of July. They indicted three of my homeboys that, al that are already in prison. And right now, I'm holding my, you know, that they overlook me. The charges go back all the way to 1997. I was out in 98. I'll find out more after I talk to my attorney on the 25th. Don't relax yet. I got more sob. <laughs> Smiley face. <coughs> As I already told you, I haven't gotten any of my personal property. My family pictures, shoes, sweats, legal papers, every little thing I own in the world is in those couple of boxes. Sad, I know smiley face. Anyways, I'm here at this crazy house and got nothing. The money in here is stamps. Each stamp is worth 25 cents. We use stamps to buy everything, food, wine, anything that someone is selling, you can get with stamps. Right now, I'm broke, so I had to make a move. I went and used the last $30 I had to get stuff to make wine. I make pretty good wine, if I say so myself. My plan was to make five gallons and turn it into eight pints of moonshine, which will sell for $30 a pint. That's about $200 I was looking to make, give or take, and depending how much I party off. I'm not a big drinker. I drink about a quart of wine, and I'm done. Any more than that, it starts to want to come back up. A third of a pint of moonshine, and I'm tipsy. Yes, I'm a lightweight. Anyhow, back to the story. So I had it all... So I had it all planned out. This is a sob story. 
So I had it all planned out. This is a sob story, so you know my plan went to shit. Instead of the big come up I was hoping for, I had to spend an hour cleaning my floor because the CEO found my stash and spilt it all on the floor of my cell. I came back in from the yard to find my cell in an inch of wine. It stank too. I cleaned my cell up and didn't make no big deal about it because the CEO didn't write me up or send me to the, sh- the hole for, for it, which he could have done. So I called it even. So now I'm asked out. I not only, not only did I spend my last dime, I also down three books of stamps, which is $15. I'm also down. So now I'm asked out. Not only did I spend my last dime, I'm also down three books of stamps, which is $15, because I borrowed some stamps for something which I planned to pay back when my wine was done. So now I go to a friend of mine that came with me from Victorville and tell him how everything went down. It's my fault because I should have never left my cell. Lesson learned. Smiley face. Being the friend he is, he hooks me up with some stuff to make three to three and a half gallons. So I get the stuff, put it together, and what do you think happened? No, I didn't get busted this time. No, instead, the place goes on lockdown for five days. It only takes three days max for the thing to finish cooking. <laughs> so now I'm stuck in my cell with three and a half gallons. I can't sell it, so I did the only thing I could do. I got ass drunk for three days, <laughs> smiley face. And what's really fucked up is the day after I drank the last of it, we came off a of lockdown. Go figure, huh? I can't sim- seem to win for losing. And they assigned me to AM dining. I've been locked down for seven years. I'm not trying to work. I make a living hustling off the y- off the land. <laughs> Why is that funny? Why are you saying why that was funny? <coughs> I don't know. <laughs> he laughs at me a lot, all the time, all day long. I'm a hustler, baby. <laughs> don't leave that part. <laughs> <clears throat> I've been locked down over seven years. I'm not trying to work. I make my living hustling off the land. You have to have a job, so I always find some pay-me-no-mind job. It's worked out, but last week they came and woke me up at four four in the morning and said I had to go to work. I think you can imagine what went through my head. But not to worry, me and the boss got a real fast understanding about it. She's cool, the boss. I don't have to work at 4 in the morning anymore. Now I just show up at 9.30 and stay until 12.30, which I can deal with. And on top of all of it, I didn't hear from you. But now I think my luck is going to turn. I just got the books you sent, so I know you still care. Hopefully, Hopefully, I'll get your letter soon. I hope I answered all of your questions. I'll be happy to answer any more that you might have. I've, I'm working in the kitchen, so I have access to what I need to make whatever. So all, all in all, <coughs> so all in all, it might not be so bad. I hope you're doing good. I miss you. Smiley face. I hope to hear from you soon, and thanks again for the books. Take care, Mesa. P.S. I haven't forgotten about your dragonfly. I have an idea of what it looks like, but I want it to be good. I haven't found any pictures or anything, but after it rains here, the dragonflies come out. A lot of them. I didn't notice them until you said you like them. Anyways, before we got locked down, I was in the yard trying to catch one, 
so I could get a good look at it. But they don't stay still long enough. I tried to get a couple of my homeboys to help me, but when I asked them, But when I asked them, they looked at me like I just fell off my bunk. And after about 20 minutes of running around trying to throw my shirt over the dragonflies, I felt like I fell off my bunk. Smiley face. People in the yard was looking at me kind of funny. I know they wanted to ask what the hell I was doing, but I think they might have thought I'm kind of off and best to just stay away. So if you don't mind... I'm going to go to the library and look for pictures instead. If you are laughing at me right now, then you best make up for, for it and send me pictures of you. Yeah, during the time I was trying to catch dragonflies on the yard, <clears throat> you know, like in Beaumont, I've never, you know, I've seen dragonflies throughout my whole life, but in Beaumont, they had a huge, really bright colored dragonfly. It was you know, I didn't really notice them until she told me that she liked them. So once she told me that she liked them and I was out there trying to get them, it was just a pretty cool sight to see. All the buzzing around with just some of them had fluorescent colors. And, yeah, I didn't realize they were so beautiful. And, um, yeah, they were pretty cool. This letter is dated July 24th, 2006. It's about eight to nine months into our letter writing. Dear Mesa, hopefully you got my last letter. I sent it the day after I sent the books. I got your letter on the 5th, and it took me until the 14th to send it to you. I don't know what my problem was, but it took me forever to decide what I wanted to write. And I still wasn't happy with it when I was finished. Oh, well. I went to the mountain this weekend with my sister and some of her girlfriend's co co-worker. It was okay, but my sister was trying to talk to me about going to see my real father again, tell me how sad he was that I didn't come with her. I told her that she needed to leave me out alone, that I'm not her, that I don't feel the same that she does. She ended up telling me that I was a cold-hearted bitch and a coward, and that she wanted to know when I stopped thinking for myself and started trying, sharing a brain with my mom. She seems to think that if I don't want the, thing, the same things that she does, then my mom must be brainwashing me. That was on the ride up. The next day, we were drinking all day, and she said that I was being mean to her. Hmm. I wonder if that had something to do with that. <clears throat> Apparently, my brother didn't like New Mexico. He already went back to Kansas City. It's probably for the best. He don't do well away from my mom. He freely admits that he is a mama's boy. All last week, I was looking for the mailman. The girls that I work with all think I'm silly, but they also think it's cute that I'm so excited to get your letters. And they all, well, the three I like, read both of our letters. So don't worry about sounding crazy. Almost everyone who knows about you thinks I'm crazy. Smiley face. Daria, my sister's girlfriend, is worried that I'm going to be an after-school special for trying to break you out. <laughs> when my mom took me to the airport, there was a couple with their hands pressed together through the glass. The guy on the inside waiting for the plane, and my mom was like, oh, look, that is going to be you soon. She think it's really funny. I looked at what I could find out on the, <clears throat> on the net about your boys. I'll send you copies. I don't know why, but I keep thinking that they'd look at your mail before they give it to you and that they might remove anything they don't want you to have. Is this the case or am I making shit up? Anyways, I also hope you don't I also hope you don't get wrapped up into this with them. That would suck a lot. So I wanna know everything. Anything you're willing to share, I'm interested. Are all these guys Cambodian? I was also wondering, do you speak Khmer at home? I'm also assuming that your family was Buddhist before you came to the States. Do you ever think about that? From what I could find, it seems that the church is very segregated. Was your congregation mostly 
Southeast Asian, it would seem to me that religion is a big part of a people's culture. How do you really feel about being Mormon? And what do your parents think about it? I imagine it was harder for them. I think it's interesting that you answered some of the questions I had in my last letter before you read it. What kind of job is a pay me no mind kind of job? And what will happen if you get caught with or taking things from the kitchen? Who is the boss? Is she like the guy you saw on the yard or a real woman? I don't know there would be women working at a men, in a men's prison. Isn't this potentially dangerous for her? And how did you come to your understanding? Because you're a sweet talker? Smiley face. Well, I guess I'll wait for your response to my last letter. Maybe I'll get it tomorrow. Then we'll be writing to each other twice a week. I can hardly wait. I hope you're doing well. Quit beefing with people. What if I decide I wanted to talk to you, but I can't because you're in the hole? Take care of yourself, Laura. And yes, I was laughing, imagining you trying to catch a dragonfly. So I'll work on a new picture of myself for next time. And don't worry, I still care. Sorry I took so long to send my last letter. I got a letter from her back to back. Yes. She's trying to make up for, you know, not writing me for so long. Dear Mesa, I hope you receive this one. I'll be real sad if you stop getting my letters. Can't you make friends with someone in the mailroom? I've never met you, and I adore you. I can't imagine that you are any less likable in person. Although, I could see you not putting up with a whole lot, and you probably have a little attitude on you when you want. Smiley face. I wouldn't stop writing to you without notice and a reason why. So I hope, even without permission, if you are sending letters and you don't hear from me, before you just let me go, that you will call me. You have the number to the shop when you get your things back. My sister has promised to send you a letter if something ever happened to me. I don't want you to sit and wonder what might have happened or think that you must have done something to make me not want to talk to you anymore. It scares me to think about it. But perhaps if you have told Mitina that you write to me, she would be kind enough to inform me if you are no longer capable of writing to me. Actually, if I stopped hearing from you and my letters were being returned, I would probably find a way to get a hold of him. Turns out I'm getting good at finding out information on the internet. Smiley face. Okay. Okay. I'm feeling a little morbid thinking about this, so I'm going to change the subject. Today I told a guy I've been hanging out with that I wanted to just be friends. We went to have dinner and I thought everything was well, went well. But now it's 1 a.m. and he's sending me text messages. Ah, ah, ugh. We just got into an argument on the phone. He's telling me he doesn't understand why I would want to continue to be friends but not date him. Does he need me to spell it out for him? People who play dumb just ends up making me mad. I'm trying to be nice, but I think he wants me to say something nasty so he can tell his friends that I was mean to him. Well, I'm not going to do that, but I'm also not going to play games. I've always been totally honest about how I feel. I just got out of a seven year relationship. I don't want to be your girlfriend. I only like you because you like me, and right now you're making me feel better about myself but now I feel like I'm in a relationship that I never agreed to be in. I'm sure I sound like a total bitch, but at least I'm being honest. I stayed in a bad relationship for four, four years for love. I'm not trying to do that again, especially if I'm not in love. If he is, I'm sorry, but I can't do anything about that. I never misled him about how I felt or what I wanted. Okay, time to say, change the subject again. I bet you're wishing the mailroom lost this letter, huh? Also, which reminds me, if you still haven't received my letter from July, let me know. There should have been one right after you got the books and another after the 24th. I keep copies of my letters and I'll send them again since I told you that. I might as well ask you for an odd favor. 
I have all my letters except the first I ever sent you. You kept my letters. I would like to have a copy. I can send it back. That is if you ever get your property back. It probably sound crazy to you, actually. I'm beginning to feel crazy. And I don't know if it's all my fault or yours. Maybe both. Smiley face. So how do you make wine? And did you have to drink it all? Were you worried about getting caught with it? And what about being drunk? What would happen if the CEO found you in a in a braided state? Inebriated? Inebriated? Drunk. Why don't you just say drunk? What would happen if the CEO found you in a inebriated state. In one of your letters, you said something about being in the hole for a few, a few times. Is this a common occurrence for you? I know about the last time. But what else do you do to get yourself thrown in there? Does it not suck that bad? Or is it just something that happens? How are you ever going to get out early for good behavior? Smiley face. And how can they put you four men in one cell together? Do they want you to hurt each other? I know this is all routine for you, but I have no idea. So I have a million questions. I had no idea what I was getting myself into when I started this. I guess like you, I thought it would be a few letters, birthdays and holiday cards. But it would be nothing. And eventually we would stop writing each other. Like what happened with the other two? I didn't think I would be this interested in you or care this much. I hope every I hope every day that you are safe. Well, I guess I won't have a whole lot to say until I get a reply from my last two letters. Still looking for the mailman every day. Still disappointed when I don't get a letter. Thank you for sending one of you. Thank you for sending one after you got the books. Otherwise, I would have no idea that you are having a problem with the mail there. Who works in the mail room anyways, staff or inmates? Do they read your letters or just look in the envelope? Okay, I hope you're doing good. I also hope to hear from you soon. Take care, Laura. Is this when you were waiting to like jump on the mailman? <laughs> Why are you crying? Because it's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> you think when they wrote that? I mean, I like it. I like. Were you like? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, I don't ever think in that way. You know, it was just at that time. I'm doing a lot of time. You know, I got 20 some years to do. And, you know, the environment that I live in was very chaotic and very violent. You know, Beaumont people were getting butchered on a daily basis, you know. So to have someone to be able to escape my reality and just to be able to live in like my own world, my own little fantasy. It was something very comforting and peaceful, you know, because when I'm writing you, I'm not there. I'm, you know, just imagining what you're doing, you know, your little smile, your smirk. And until we were able to talk to each other, I was always imagining what you sound like. So. It was a wonderful escape. Okay, we have one more letter. Dear Laura, hi, as always, I hope you are well. I'm doing all right. Today is one of my better days. I went down to get my mail, and there's two letters waiting for me for a meal. Maybe my luck's turned. You sure have a lot of questions, smiley face. It's cool, I don't mind. It's nice to have someone that wants to know things about me. I'm going to try to answer what I can. On the things with my friends out there, I can't talk about it. I'd like to share it with you, but my attorney says 
I can't talk about any of it, and I can't call anybody back home that has any relation to it. I myself don't know much detail, but my attorney was summoned to court to represent one of those guys, but the prosecutor told her she couldn't represent him because she's my attorney, saying it was a conflict of interest. Now my attorney isn't legal. Now my attorney isn't legally my attorney. What I mean by that is that the case she represented me on is over, so she's really not my attorney anymore. Still, she wasn't allowed to represent him because of me, and that got her worried about what they might do with me. I haven't been charged or anything. I hope I don't ever. My attorney sent me a copy of the indictment, and for some reason, my name is in there. So just in case they later decide to bring charges on me, it's in my best interest not to talk to anyone about it. All mail gets read coming and going. And the papers you sent me, I've been trying to get it from my homeboy. And I still haven't gotten his mail or anyone's mail coming from that way. I'm glad I get, I'm glad I still get your letters. Half of those guys are Cambodian, and the other half is Laos. I've known all the Cambodians since they were kids, three to four years old. I'm worried about this because they went back and charged some of them even though they were already in jail serving time. They're, go they're going all the way back to 1997, and I was out for six months in 98. And where my name was in the indictment, that my, ter my attorney sent me, somebody is saying that I'm the leader. That's not good for me. There's nothing that I can do but wait here and see where it all goes. I do speak Khmer. I speak Khmer when I talk to my mom and dad. It's not as good as it once was, but it's enough to get by. Maybe when you start letting me call you, I can teach you a few words. I get 300 minutes a month I can call, collect, I don't care, I don't because it costs too much. So I just call direct and it costs me $3.45 for 15, $3 for 15 minutes. We have an inmate account. Every money we get from home or from our job here goes to the inmate account and we can go to commissary or use the phone. The thing we use for money here is stamps. One stamp is 25 cents. You can buy a quart of wine for 20 stamps, $5. I'm a lightweight, so a quart would get me good and buzz. Too much more than that, I'll be praying to the porcelain god, <laughs> which I was doing last night, yesterday, Sunday. It was my buddy's birthday, so we made three gallons, and it'll be a long time before I party like that again. I'm a lightweight, <laughs> smiley face. I think maybe you have a movie image of prison. I'm not saying that, that things like that don't happen because they do more often than I care for. But for the most part, it's mellow. You just treat people the way you want to be treated. Don't bullshit. Don't lie. If you buy something, make sure you pay. Don't call anyone a punk or a bitch unless you're prepared to fight. Don't cheat when you gamble. Well, I should say don't get caught cheating when you gamble. And if you lose, you better have the money to pay. It's not hard to get along, but sometimes you run into people that are stupid or they think they're Superman and you have to deal with it in a way that leaves no misunderstanding. Smiley face. They have female officers that work here. It's no big deal. You would think they get raped and stuff like that. It's happened before, but even though I'm sure a lot of these guys think about it, it wouldn't be wise for anyone to act on it. They will fuck you up. I wouldn't want my sister or mom or you to work in a prison. You'll get a lot of attention, but I don't think you would like some of the kind of attention you get. I understand the... the lust and all of that but some of these some of these guys 
get real disrespectful with it. They got these people that we call gunners. The reason we call them gunners is because they're known to pull it out and stroke it in front of the CEO, gunning them down. You got stalkers. You got all sorts. I don't know all of it, but if these guys were to do some of the things they do in here to my sister or mom on the streets, I'd kill them. There's really no physical harm that happens, but I can't say the same about emotional harm. But then again, you get some female CEO that like it or that isn't bothered by it. I wouldn't want you to work here. I don't have to wake up at 4 a.m. to go to the kitchen. Me and the boss had an understanding, smiley face. I'm not much of a sweet talker, smiley face. I try not to talk to any of the CEOs, whether female or male, if I can help it. Me and officials don't get along. I'm not going to go out of my way to disrespect them. I'm going to give them the courtesy due to any person, but I'm not trying to make friends with them. I just told her that I'm not waking up at 4 in the morning. We all have to have a job, so I told her give me something where I don't have to wake up at 4. If not, then just take me to the hole. I word it better than that. I just told her that $10 a month is not anything I'm waking up for. She was cool about it, so now I wake up at 6, which I do every morning anyways, and I go to the kitchen when they call my unit to eat. I work in the tray room, washing the trays and cups during meal time from 6 to 7.30. I wash trays. After that, I come back to the unit and read or go to rec and play pool or just sit around, smiley face. 9.30, I go back and eat lunch. 10.30, lunch starts for the whole place. So I'm working till 12.30. At 12.30, I come back to my unit and work out for a couple of hours. Then shower and kick back in my cell. At 4 p.m., everybody is locked down for count. Count clears at about 5, 5.30. 5.30, dinner starts. I go eat, and after that, I might go play handball or basketball or just hang out to 8.30. At 8.30, they have recall. Everybody has to return to their units. 10 p.m. is lockdown. And it starts over again at 6 a.m. They have school for people that don't have their GED. They have classes and for other things. None I'm interested in, smiley face. They have a hobby shop. People can make leather stuff or paint pictures. I might take the painting class. I got to wait and see how much it costs so I can see if I can afford it. We got a basketball league, a softball league, and in a couple of months, football gonna, is going to start. I play on a basketball team. We just started. We're one and one right now. My next game is Thursday. I play on a, an Indian team. We're all right. I'm the Cambodian Michael Jordan. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm pretty good, though. I wish I could dunk, but I can barely touch the net. This place has movements every hour, starting at 7, work call, 8.30 activities, and so forth. You got to get where you're going within the 10 minute move or you're stuck till the next move. Buddhism is more a way of life, a part of our culture than it is our religion. No matter what you believe or who you are, the stuff we believe the stuff that are believed and practiced by Buddhists is a part of our lives. If you're a good person at heart and believe in treating people kind and respectful to all things, then you're pretty much practicing Buddhism. I don't necessarily believe in reincarnation, but you can't deny karma. Being here is my karma for doing things that I shouldn't have done. I also believe that you are my karma for some good that I might have done. 
I'm not sure what it is that I've done to deserve you, but I'll do my best to be worthy. You've been great, and I enjoy this very much. I find myself thinking about you more often than I should. Smiley face. You're cool. I never imagined that it would turn out so nice. Don't worry. I'm not going to get all feely-feely with you. <laughs> I wouldn't want you to blush in front of your friends. Smiley face. But I don't think it'd be so bad if we turn into an after-school special. As long as there's a happy ending. I'm a sucker for a happy ending. <laughs> Speaking of your friends, you say you let your friends read our letters. Well, I was wondering, do you let them read the kinky letters we send each other to? I don't mind. And I like... I don't mind. And like them, I think you're crazy too. Smiley face. Your mom seems cool. <laughs> and that was funny. And if it ever gets... To where you would like to meet me or and see me you don't have to worry about a glass because it's contact visit you get to hug and kiss in the beginning and at the end don't freak out on me i'm just saying okay if you need to go ahead and take a deep breath <laughs> i didn't mean to get carried away it's just when you mention what your mom said well the thought just crossed my mind and well it was a nice thought. Smiley face. Don't worry. I'm on my best behavior. So when you decide to let me call you, I'll be here. Smiley face. Let's get back to your other questions. You sure have a lot. My family is Mormon. And it works out for them. Us. The segregation thing is more for language than anything. When I was going to church, we used to have a lot of Cambodians that couldn't speak English. And instead of having to translate everything, we just conducted all the service in Cambodian. You only have so many hours for service and so forth. If you had to repeat everything, it'll take up too much time. The main service, sacrament, we conduct separate and then join later for classes. The people here are mostly like anywhere else. You get some good people and you get some bad, but here is where they send most of the fuck-ups. There's only two other prison with a higher security level, and that's Marion and ADX Florence. You just keep your eyes and ears open and find out who not to mess with. Mind your own, and you'll get by for the most part. No matter what kind of person someone is, a man's going to respect a man. And if you're being less, less of a man, then you're going to have problems. I don't really have problems with anyone. And if a problem arises, I know how to deal with it. But like I said, right now, I'm on my best behavior. Smiley face. What's up with you? Are you being good? I wish it didn't have to be the way it is with you and your dad. From what you've told me, I fully understand where you're at. I would feel... I would feel the same if I were you. I don't have any advice to give on that. I don't make a habit of speaking on things that I don't know. What I will say is that it's your life, your feelings, and you're a grown woman. You know better than I or anyone else to what is best for you. I want you to be happy or at least not sad. You tried now it's his turn. I don't think you're wrong in that. I hope it works out for you. And tell your sis, I don't have anything against her. <laughs> I'm sure she's great. To let you be, because in the end, we're the only ones who are responsible for our choices and the ones that have to deal with and live with it. Okay. I don't know if I answer all of your questions. Um... If I haven't, then I will. I don't mind. It's nice to share myself with someone, and it feels even nicer that someone cares to ask. It's getting late. If I don't send this out tonight, I'll have to wait till tomorrow, and that means I'll have to wait that much longer to hear from you. I don't mean to be impatient, but that's the way you got me. 
Take care, Mesa. P.S. I thought it'd be better if I just sent you a commissary list so you can see for yourself all the neat stuff <laughs> we get to buy. There's a problem right now with some of the things they sell. It does us no good to buy the microwave items because the warden here took the microwave from us because when I first got here, someone heated some water in the microwave and threw it on a CO. Smart, huh? But we have other ways to cook our food. I'll tell you, a, I'll tell you all about it next time. Hope to hear from you soon. Don't worry about writing me a good or bad letter. They're all great to me. I just like hearing from you. Besides, you say you're the type to speak your mind, so speak your mind. Smiley face. And then he did a little drawing, and it says, This is not for your tat. I'm not sh even sure if I got the dragonfly right. I will, though. I just wanted to sketch this for you so you'll know that I haven't forgotten and that I'm thinking of you. It's just a little drawing. Well, that concludes this episode. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't say enough about how their letters and this during this time period in my life helped me, you know, just emotionally, spiritually, and, you know, giving me some type of hope, even though, like, you know, the probability of us ending up together, being there at the end of the road was slim, and that it maybe it was just a fantasy. But when you're in a dark place like that, and having years and decades before you even have an opportunity to come home, hope is important. Having hope helps you make it through the day, you know. Okay, see you guys next week. Welcome to the journey. Uh, <laughs>